everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. Today I have you a spotlight on the November kit of the month for bra builders and this one is called Banquet and it's this really really beautiful color. So Sue has dyed a new color for this kit and the color is called blackberry cream and I think that's such a perfect name it is this really nice sort of like warm toned purple especially in the sheer cup lining um, but this like creamy sort of lighter colored purple in the other fabrics so first let's take a look at the lace that comes in the kit and this lace is a stretch lace and Let's see, I'd probably say it's about seven inches wide. I don't have a ruler on me right now. Uh, you can see that it does have this sort of lighter motif at the two edges as well as the gold trim. And I think that the gold trim really pull, pulls in with the purple really nicely. So if I, let's see, pull off a bit of this lace, we can see that it has quite a graphic geometric design in it with these circles. I am much more fond of this style lace than I am an overly floral lace, but of course that's all up to you. So as I said, this is a stretch lace and I believe she's offering this in both bra kits as well as underwear kits. And I'm gonna show you examples of both of those at the end of the video. So in addition to the lace, you have the accompanying fabrics that come with it. You won't necessarily get all of these fabrics. It depends on the configuration that you purchase your kit in. So the first fabric I have to show you here is the sheer cup lining. And if we overlay the lace on top of the sheer cup lining, you can really start to see those contrasts come out. Of course, sheer cup lining picks up dye really, really well. It always tends to be the most saturated of the fabrics, but when you're using the sheer cup lining, you're probably only using one or two layers at a time you can see here if I put my hand under a single layer of it that it, it doesn't look so deep and saturated it's a little bit more muted so that is the sheer cup lining so next up we have is the micro duoplex fabric um, so generally you would pick between micro duoplex or sheer cup lining when you're making your kit selection so know that both of these won't come in your kit. So the micro duoplex definitely picks up a lot softer, more of that like sort of creamy color. I think this micro duoplex is absolutely gorgeous. I will say that micro duoplex is a little bit more tricky to work with, so I wouldn't recommend it as your first sewing or first bra sewing fabric. Uh, definitely take a look at your needles that you're using as well as your thread because both of those can make a huge difference in how nice is your stitches are going to look on top of it. And then the last fabric I have to show is the medium weight power net. The power net does look very similar to the micro duoplex. So if you're looking for something that has a very consistent look across the two, I would select the micro duoplex to go with the power net. Whereas a sheer cup lining, you get a little bit more of that like contrast tonality in it. So those are the three fabrics we have to look at. And let's see, let's look at the elastics next. So these elastics Sue has dyed up as sort of a sample. Um, so I have a little bit of inconsistencies in my colors here, but uh, she has assured me that the production versions of these are gonna look much more even. Uh, honestly, I don't see much modeledness in them, so I think she's just being overly cautious, but just to let you guys know. So here we have some Pico elastic here, uh, both in the, I think that's probably 5 8 and 3 8 is a smaller pico elastic. Um, I have some underwire channeling. These elastics are tending to look a little bit more like the lace and the uh, sheer cup lining more so than this, but I think that they still look really good together. Last up, we have the straps right here. I think the straps tied up really gorgeous. I always think the straps are the prettiest thing. Um, some cotton twill tape, and of course, some hook and eyes. So you get an idea of what those different colors are going to look like. So next up, we can sort of compare this to some of the other purples that are in the Bra Builders lineup, just so you can, can get an idea. So we have Blackberry Cream here. Uh, the next one I pulled up was, a, this one is called Amethyst. Uh, and Amethyst was a part of the Regency kit earlier this year. Uh, so it's a little bit dustier of a purple. And you can see that the blackberry cream is a lot more warm toned, has a lot more pinky 
tones to it than the amethyst does. The next purple I'm going to pull up is plum pudding. And I think plum pudding is one that you can order right now as one of your special colors. Um, plum pudding is a lot darker. Oh, and all of these I'm just showing comparing sheer cup lining to sheer cup lining. That way you're getting an apples to apples comparison. So plum pudding is much deeper, much more saturated, much more cool toned compared to the raspberry cream. And then the last purple I would show it next to is, I believe this is called royalty and this is one of the legacy colors. Um, so royalty definitely has a lot it's super, super saturated purple. So in terms of the other purples that she has to offer, I would say that Blackberry Cream is pretty unique. Um, they don't really, none of these really look very similar to me to Raspberry Cream. It'd be interesting to see this against something like Rose Clay, which does have a lot more of those pinky tones in it. Unfortunately, I do not have Rose Clay for comparison's sake right now. So now that we've taken a look at all of the fabrics and some purple comparisons, we can take a look at the different items that I've made with this kit. So first up here, we have this bra using the Fenway pattern from Orange Lingerie. Uh, this isn't exactly the pattern as drafted. I have done this little like keyhole addition here. I just thought it was really interesting to have like the open chest area. And so I've dropped my bridge down and then I've used vulnerable elastic and continued across the bridge to the other side to give myself that little keyhole. I think it's a really nice effect and I'm really happy how that turned out. So for this bra, I've used the micro duoplex and the micro duoplex forms the upper cup here. Uh, and then I've done a lace sort of overlay along the bottom of the cup, but they're all lined in micro duoplex from the inside. So you have all that firm support and stability. And then this is a partial band bra. So we have the, the back band material, the power net connecting directly onto the wires here. So I think this is really, really, fun way to use this fabric. I think that gold accent is what really does it for me in this kit. I think that gold accent just looks like chef's kiss perfection um, on this bra. And if we look at it from the inside, you can sort of see that tone on tone effect that you get with the different elastic shades. I will say I have, I sort of like pride myself in having a ton of thread and I did not have a thread that matched this very well. So I went ahead and used so fine thread and just a light gray on all my micro duoplex portions, just because I really like that higher quality thread for those, but everywhere else, I just had to go to the store and buy a Coats and Clark. I think it was in Mulberry. Um, I thought that was a pretty good match. It's still not exact match. This has a little bit more red tones in it than the Mulberry thread does, but close enough if you're looking for something. Um, and then on the interior here, you can see I've used that twill tape, that, that cotton twill tape that comes in the kit. I've used it across the bridge there just to make sure that it is nice and firm and not going anywhere. So that is the bra that I've made using this kit. And for underwear, I have chosen to do the Delphine thong from Ululu. Uh, this is a pattern that I got really recently. I won it in Brogast and so I was excited to just get it to try it out. Um, I will say that this particular pattern is very lace hungry. I think I probably used about two and a half yards of lace just to make these undies, but I think it is so pretty. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I probably would have used maybe a different fabric in this tummy triangle here. So you, of course you have these, these two scalloped lace edges that form the leg hole and then you have a triangle both in the tummy and the bum i think i would probably have chosen a different fabric for there maybe power net maybe a micro mesh something like that but um i went ahead and did all lace and it's it's really pretty but i, I don't know that i would do an all lace one again uh so on this one here i really like it because you can definitely sort of see that that nice gold edge. And then when it's worn, you do see some of the circular patterns of the lace. I'll try to pop in a picture over here of this on my mannequin. It's a little bit easier to see how the lace and the seaming on these are formed. So this is the front of the thong. And then here we have the back of the thong. Uh, I've chosen to cover my waistline edge as well as my gusset with fold over elastic. Fold over elastic is just my preferred elastic to use in underwear. Uh, but one thing that I really 
really like about bra builders is that she gives you the options to choose what it is you want to use. So when you're buying a panty kit, you can choose folder plastic or you can choose pico or flat elastic. You know, you have the option to choose what it is you want to finish your your underpants with. So I always choose folder elastic because I think it's my favorite when it comes to underwear. So yes, the Delphine thong I think is a great use of this edge. I, I just I think it's really pretty and I think that it works quite well with this Fenway bra. I think the two of them together, it gives me these sort of like Disney princess vibes that I am just loving. So I hope you guys have enjoyed a look at the banquet kit for November and I will see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.